Hello and welcome to RF Design Tutorials, the brand new video tutorial playlist where we talk about the practical design aspects of various RF circuits. This is tutorial two. And in this tutorial, we will talk about schematic driven patch antenna design. Here is what you will learn in next few minutes. How to design and create patch antenna using simple schematic components, perform the scaling of the antenna geometry, then create a parametric antenna for EM simulation, run parametric EM simulation and fine tune the antenna performance. This video provides basic techniques which we shall use to come up with the equation based patch antenna synthesis and phase array design in future tutorials. So make sure you watch it till the end and pick up all the tricks we talked about. Enjoy the learning. Before we get started, a gentle request. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe. Once you subscribe, click on the bell icon to enable all the notification. If you like the video, hit the like button at the bottom of the video screen and share it with your colleagues and friends who may be interested in watching similar tutorials. Now, the big question uh, we are trying to discuss in this video is whether we can represent this kind of antenna geometry using some basic transmission line components in ADS schematic. Now, if you can't figure out a way uh, of putting it into schematic components, here is an idea for you. Now, if you start dissecting this antenna geometry into three main sections, section one, which is basically representing this feed, section two, which is referring to this inset uh, section and the partial patch antenna on the either side, and finally, the remaining patch. If you start dividing your geometry into these three paces, definitely you can come up with an ADS schematic where everything can be parameterized very, very easily. And you could control the geometry from the schematic itself rather than having to work with various coordinates of all these vertex points in the layout. So let's see how we can do that. So here, uh, considering those three sections, I just put on the, the geometry we talked about in the tutorial one. And here I just have a reference lines here indicating three sections which we want to talk about. Now, once we have these three sections, let me show you the schematic which can represent your kind of antenna. So here we have three section defined by these three components in the schematic. The first component is a simple micro strip line which has certain width and length associated. Similarly, I have a three couple line model where we can define the width of individual lines as well as the spacing between these two lines and the length of this section. And the third one is a simple open circuit stub having width and length parameter, or you could use the same line here as well. Now these components you can obtain from going to T-Lines micro strip library, and here you will find MLIN you know, three line couple model as well as MLOC. So these three components is what I have used here for my design. Now, using the dimensions we calculated in the earlier video, I set up a variable by placing this variable equation here, and I added all the variables on this, you know, uh, window here. So I have W feed, which is basically the width of the line, which is represented here and rest of the variables we talked about in our earlier tutorial. These variables are getting passed to these components, and this is how we can change the value only at you know, one place here, and rest of the geometry will get automatically adjusted. Using simple logic, uh, for example, uh, the patch length from this point to the end of this transmission line, uh, overall length is uh, W or L, because we are dealing with you know, square patch, and I have used a simple you know, logic here to calculate the length of this section versus the length of this section and so on. Now, once we have this schematic in place, we can go to layout, generate update layout, and using these components, we can have a layout. And now if you notice, the layout shown here is exactly the patch antenna we were working earlier. Now here you can ignore these connection points because it's coming from the micro strip line, you know, component placed in a schematic. But when, when we run EM simulation, these will be, you know, taken off and everything will become a regular conductor. 
Now, if we try measuring uh, this antenna geometry, which we just created, and we can ensure that all the dimensions are as we expect. Also, if you switched on this info window here, this info window uh, shows you all the parameters, uh, even if those parameters are defined by certain variables, and we can check whether all the parameters are appearing properly in our layout design. If this window is not shown to you, you can right click and switch on the info window, and then you can observe all the, all the parameters here. Once we have this geometry, I can go ahead and set up an EM simulation like we talked about in earlier tutorials, and we can set up either a momentum simulation or FEM and perform the respective analysis and look at the output result. So this is how simple it becomes if we drive the whole layout geometry from a schematic. Now, remember in tutorial one, we also talked about uh, doing scaling in order to do the frequency or to handle the frequency offset. So how can we do all these in a schematic? Again here, I have added one more variable here called SF, which is basically scaling factor. And if you keep this scaling factor to one, that means everything, as you can see, I've used SF as a multiplication factor wherever I need. And if you keep it one, it's like 100% of the geometry. But based on the initial uh, EM simulation, if we have to reduce it by 2%, I can make it 0.98, which is 0 0.02 basically. So 2% of undersizing. And if we need to scale up, uh, for example, by 2%, I can define it as 1.02. So we can scale up or scale down as may be necessary. So what we learned from the previous video, we need to reduce it by around 2%. So we'll keep the scaling factor as 0.98. Now, once we do that, all the properties gets scaled up according to the scale factor. And if we generate the layout from here, all these equations will be respected. And if we do the measurement of this antenna again, we can see now the antenna geometry is smaller, which will push our resonance frequency on the upwards direction. And we will fine tune the antenna performance. So if you were looking for a small frequency shift, you can stop here because you can manipulate the schematic components and keep shifting the geometry and come up with different instances which you need. However, if you need to run a little more uh, you know, sophisticated analysis where you may want to do a parametric EM simulation or want to do an electromagnetic optimization, we will need to parametrize this entire geometry and make this antenna as one parametric cell or what we call as P cell in some tools. So let's now understand how can we create a P cell out of this antenna. So here I already have this thing done. So let me open up uh, that layout. In the parametric EM, uh, the, the step which we followed up to this point is going to be same. And once we have this geometry, I could create a variables which will I will use in my layout design. And that's layout way of creating the variables. So going to EM component parameters, I can declare as many parameters as I want to associate with my antenna geometry. And here you can see I have used the same nomenclature of W, L, H, Y, X, Z, like with what I use in a schematic. And I have initialized it with the nominal value which we calculated originally. Um, which I showed you in tutorial one, and I have associated the you know, units with all these parameters. Once we declare all the parameters as we need, instead of using schematic generated variables in these components, I can go ahead and double click on this component and assign these variables here. So notice when we assign the variable uh, names here, we don't need to use units because those units have already been declared in these parameters here, and we don't want to double count the units. Once all the components have these um, you know, parameters assigned, as you can see, all the components I have, have those parameters assigned. Only thing I have not done is make this um, feed length as you know, parameterized component. I will use a static 10 mm. But in case you want even that to be parameterized, you can create a new variable to, to give you know, feed the feed length. Now, once you have the basic uh, geometry with all variables assigned, we can go ahead and switch on our EM simulation. 
we can do all the settings as we have learned either using an FEM simulator or using momentum. The choice is up to designer and we can select the right substrate. We can define the frequency plan. In the output plan um, here, because I want to generate a parametric EM component, I will enable the fields to be calculated for all the frequencies. And more importantly, I need to create a EM model because after our parametric simulation run, this model will contain the results of all the value combinations which we will end up simulating. And while creating model, I have unchecked the, the, this option here, which basically ignores the currents of the field data. But here, when I generate models for various com value combinations, I would like to store the far fields as well as the antenna for all those combinations because we never know what value combination we will end up needing in our antenna design. So with this basic setup, we can go ahead and simulate. And once we simulate the design, this model will get created, which will be our placeholder for future simulation. Now, extra thing which you need to do, um, because once we make a model, we need a symbol to represent it in the schematic. And that can be done by clicking on this icon here. And then we will select layout lookalike symbol and here I already have the symbol done. That's why the prompt doesn't come up. But when you do it for the first time, you will have a prompt indicating whether you want to generate a black box symbol or antenna or the layout lookalike. So I selected layout lookalike symbol. And you can notice I have one port. This is how my geometry will be represented. So let's see how this works. So with this basic stuff setting, we are, I simulated the, the notional value based data. I can go and create a new, a new schematic now and I'm fully ready to run a parametric EM simulation. And here I already have a test bench which is representing my circuit. And you can notice the antenna P cell and the parameter associated. And we can create, take this symbol, just drag and drop onto the schematic. And you can notice all the parameters which we attached in the layout come up here. So you could either hard code the numbers as per your choice, or here in my case, I have declared the same variables which I used in my schematic. And now I'm just simply passing these variables here. So with those settings, if I run a nominal simulation, I would be able to see the antenna response, which I saw even in tutorial one, where I have the frequency which got shifted slightly on the lower side. And this is what we need to fine tune to correct take it to 2.4 gigahertz. Now with this setup, okay, we can go ahead and set up a parameter sweep. And here notice I'm sweeping W parameter from a start range to stop range. And when we run this analysis, ADS, you know, the first time when you run it, ADS will launch a sequence of EM simulations at each value combination. At the end, you have this multi-dimensional data display and when we zoom in here, we can notice each curve is representing one W value. And if, if we start reducing the W value by 0.1 mm, you can see how the resonance frequency starts shifting on the higher frequency side. And another interesting trend which you note is as the frequency is shifting on the higher side, the return loss is getting poor. But we get one trend and we know what parameter to change in order to shift the frequency. And we can notice for 2.4 gigahertz, we need a width of the patch or length of the patch as 28.7 mm. So that's one of the key metrics I derive out of this data. Next, in order to improve the matching, we know the matching can be uh, controlled by manipulating the inset you know, depth here. So I'm going to sweep a parameter called H and H is the inset depth here from some start value to stop value. And when we run, it will again launch a series of EM simulations. And now we notice the best matching is obtained uh, when H is 11.8. So once I know these two value combinations, I can deactivate the parameter sweep and simply type in the values which we need, 28.7 and 11.8 and we can go ahead and run this analysis. And now for sure, as you can see, we have the response centered around 2.4 gigahertz 
and I have the good S11 response as, as we need um, at 2.4 gigahertz. Now let's um, give it a couple of minutes of showing you. So when we ran this parameter sweep for the first time, if I double click on the data you know, model, which is created from the, from the FEM simulation in this case, but in your case, it could be momentum. And if you look at database, you can see all the data which got generated for all the different value combinations. And each value combination has one set of results. So if you want to plot the data display just for, let's say, this value combination, you could right click and click on data display. And now ADS will extract this data and show you data display of antenna only for that value combination. And this way you can individually plot data for every value combination which you have here. Also, for any specific combination, if you want to see antenna far field, you can select the data point, click on the far field. It will take the data out. It will do the far field calculation based on the result which it has stored in the memory. And now it will just plot the same you know, far field window which we talked about um, in the earlier video. So I'm not going to go into great detail, but here for every value combination, you would be able to see the antenna you know, performance and you can look at various frequencies at various, um, you know, geometry value combination. So this is, um, you know, basically a big data container having all the required values for you as you need uh, for your parametric analysis. The same setup, once we have the variable setup and in case you would want, like to run a circuit optimization, same infrastructure, you can very simply go ahead and put an optimization goal and put an optimization controller, and then you can run an EM optimization using this technique. So it serves all the purpose, uh, but in my experience, running EM optimization blindly on a, on a layout component, which has a lot of parameters, sometimes is not very fast. It takes a lot of iterations to arrive at the value. So the technique shown here is my personal favorite. I like to sweep the parameters, look at the trend, and then make a very educated decision on which way I want to go. And even if I have to optimize parameter, out of these five, six parameters, I can just fine tune and you know find out two or three critical variables which really make a desired impact to improve the performance. So that's all for this video. Hope you like the content which I presented in this tutorial. And if you like the video, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot for your attention.